Chapter 3-1 Representing Decimals Before we get into practice, let's take a second look at the place value chart. To the left, you'll find the words that we've used probably for quite a few years now. Uh, the place value columns being thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. The new part are going to be the columns to the right of the decimal at the bottom. And if you look, it mirrors the other side. We don't use ones, but we use everything else. But the new key is we add a th at the end. So now we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and ten thousandths. Let's jump right into it. Write 35.576 in word form. The key here is recognizing the decimal. Once we recognize that, the rest of this problem can become quite easy. The first step is we're going to just say the number that's in front of the decimal. You can see it in red, 35. We would write that. The next step is representing the decimal as a word. And simply, every time we see the decimal, we're going to use the word AND. The next step is to now write the number that we see after the decimal. In this case, the number is 576. Finally, we have to write the place value that it ends at. There are three digits after the decimal. That column is the thousandths column. Therefore, the last word we're going to use is thousandths. Let's reverse this now and try it the other way. Write 3 and 22 hundredths in standard form. The first thing we're going to do is write the number we see before the word add. And this is pretty simple. I'm just going to write down the number 3. I see that word and, and that means put the decimal in. The next step is to write down the number that comes after the decimal. In this case, it's 22. Now you'll see the word hundredths. That lets me know how many spots there are after the decimal. In this case, there's two spots, and 22 fills it perfectly. This has been Chapter 3-1, Representing Decimals. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please contact me through my email or through my website. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.